I'm Charlie, and this is a tutorial for the Computer Networking Security course Lab 1. In this lab, we're familiarizing ourselves with the tools and procedures that we'll be using throughout this course. You'll notice I open and close some GUIs very quickly as per the guide, and also show you the file transfer link. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to start here on the course's homepage. We're going to go off to the left in the navigation pane here over down to Course Tools and click on Online Labs. On the Online Labs page, we want to go to number one, Perform Reconnaissance and Probing Using ZenMap GUI. We click here, it should take us to the Toolwire Live Labs page, and we're going to scroll down and click on Lab Access, and it should take us to this workstation right here. Once here, we're going to start opening and closing some applications just to get familiar with them. So let's start with Wireshark. It's one of the applications we'll be using quite a bit. And Wireshark will allow us to capture uh, traffic and analyze it. So here's where you would select your interface whenever you were going to do it. But uh, we're going to go ahead and close this out. We don't need this yet. The next thing we're going to do is open up the NetWitness program. So let's double click on this and let it come up. And uh, take some time, if you wish, to familiarize yourself with this. You will be seeing this again. And once again, we're just uh, taking a look at these applications. Let's go ahead and close it again. And move over. Um, now we're going to open up the Nessus Server Manager. So let's click on this and open this up. And uh, familiarize yourself a bit with uh, this interface. You'll see this again throughout the course. And once you're done reviewing it, go ahead and close it out. Right. The next thing we need to do is go over to our ISSA VM server farm folder. So let's open this up. Inside of this, these are the systems you can remote into. We're going to pick the Windows one. So let's go ahead and double click on this connection and it will allow us to remotely connect to another system. And go ahead and log in here with the credentials that are in the guide. See, enter the password and then click OK. Now when this comes up you'll see a connect to server box will just pop up here. This connect to server box is perfectly fine when you click OK it will actually come up with a um, FileZilla server. You'll see that. Um, let's go ahead and click OK and then you'll see this pop up. It's perfectly fine. You'll see this again uh, throughout the course but when you're done looking at this go ahead and just close it out. We don't need it. And you'll notice a lot of these icons look the same like they did on the on the last workstation. That's absolutely fine. Uh, you'll be using those on, on either one throughout the course. And when you're done here, just go ahead and log off from this particular system, and it'll bring you back to the first one. Okay, now um, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, open up FileZilla. And this allows us to transfer files between uh, the systems. And the information at the top of the host, username, password, that's in order to, to log in. And on the left, you'll see here a local site and a remote site, and that's for transferring files back and forth. And just close this out when you're done looking at it. And now we want to move on. Let's go over to the TFTPD 32SE admin. So let's go down here. Here we go. The admin link. Let's go ahead and double click on this and launch it. And this allows us to, to um, also start a, uh, an FTP server, and it also has a client on it. And we'll, you'll, you'll use that quite a bit later on. I want to go ahead and open up this folder again, and now we're going to cycle through these uh, two Ubuntu workstations. So just go ahead and click on the first one here, so we can remote into that one. Go ahead and log in with the information from the guide. Click log in. If you don't see a password in the guide, um, it's the same one that you used to log in with um, on the last machine. So this may take a second to come up, but this is an um, um, older Ubuntu uh, workstation desktop. You can click through here um, and see all the different. There's a gedit, great text editor, and there's a terminal. And you can click on any of these, for example, fire up the terminal here. We can look at the, the man page for LS, for example. And, um, okay, it's great stuff. So cancel out of this and just uh, familiarize yourself with the menus. You know, you'll be seeing these again if, you, if you're if you not 
accustomed to Linux or the GNOME desktop like uh, what you're seeing here. Um, so we'll go ahead and close this out. And here's the system folder. I'll be using this administration menu again later on. So that uh, we can then log out of here. You'll see the update manager pop up. Uh, ignore that. That's just that the system found updates. Go ahead and log out of student. And um, you just click log out here and you'll see the, just go ahead and hit close on this when the updater comes up. All right, now we can select the second one and it's exactly the same. I, I uh, haven't noticed any difference when I've gone through these two systems, but uh, go ahead and log in. And so you can see exactly what I'm seeing when I log in. All right, and you can see it just looks the same as the other one. So you can click through the menus and see if there's any difference. And then when you're done, just go ahead and log out. All right, now once we uh, once this goes away, okay, we're gonna go ahead and let's see here. Let's get this out of the way, and go. We don't need this. Uh, FTP uh, window open anymore, so we go ahead and close this. Yeah, and then um, go down to the start menu and click on run right here, run. And if CMD is not already typed in here, go ahead and type it in for the command window. Bring up a DOS prompt when you hit OK. And there's the DOS prompt there. So we're going to go ahead and ping some systems. So let's start with the first one, ping 172.30. Dot zero dot eight, and you'll see the pings show up here. Typical four ping response. All right, now let's go ahead and ping another one. This was um, the same except for the last octet is one. So go ahead and hit enter, and there you go. I'm pinging the different systems, and you don't need this anymore, so you can just close this out. You'll be using ping to generate traffic later on. Now we want to open up Putty, so let's double click this icon here, and we're going to go ahead and use this to connect right now to a system. So let's go ahead and type in the uh, host field here. Let's type in uh, 172.16.8.5. We want to pick Telnet and then just go ahead and hit open. And there we go. Now we this one we want to log into the credentials are different. This one Cisco and Cisco. And now we're on the switch. And you'll notice that uh, in the prompt information, it shows you the IP address and the uh, the host name. So once we're on here, we're going to execute some commands that you'll find in the tables. There's show interface. And you can scroll up and down and see uh, the information, the output from there, and review this. You'll, you will need to do this later on. And we're going to go through all the commands that are in the table. So the next one is the show IP interface command. Let's type that show IP interface and hit enter. And once again, feel free to peruse through all this output. And the next one is show VLAN. And this one is interesting. Uh, if you familiarize yourself with the output of this, you have your, your ports, uh, the status, the actual names. Uh, this is very good information. And then the next one is show IP ARP. ARP. And here's another good one that shows you there's your hardware addresses and your actual um, IPs. All right. Now let's go ahead and, um, you know, we don't need this right now anymore. We can close this window out by typing quit. And now we want to open up PuTTY again. We're going to do a secure shell connection this time. So in the box, type in uh, 172.16.20.5 and secure shell is already selected, SSH. And go ahead and hit open. And once again, same thing, Cisco, Cisco. And you'll notice the information was the same. It just, the login looked a little different. We're going to go ahead and um, go through uh, those same commands that we did at the Telnet session, so we can see you know, how uh, your, the connection may have been different, but the output is the same.
and of course we are on a different switch. Let's go ahead and show IP interface. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. You can stretch out these DOS prompts out a little bit, or these windows here you can stretch out. And the putty windows. There's all the same information, very similar information. Show IP ARP. And then again, there's your IPs and your hardware. All right. And just type quit. There we go. Now, the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and open up um, the, the Nmap ZenMap GUI. So let's get this fired up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and maximize this so it's easier to see. Now we're going to run some scans on the network. So let's go ahead and um, first we need to select what system we're going to scan or what range of systems. So here's an IP range. It's already preloaded, so just go ahead and select it. And then we're going to pick, there's a, the profiles on the right are predetermined scans. So we can just select one from the list. And in this case, we're going to pick a ping scan um, that's in the guide. So go ahead and find ping scan. And just go ahead and click scan. And that will launch uh, the ping scan with, within that range of, of addresses. And you'll see it come back. And you'll notice on the left that some, some IP addresses have been populated. And that's um, uh, the systems that it actually successfully pinged. Now we're going to click an, an intense scan. And this can take a very, very long time. So um, I am going to cut the video to make it go much faster. Uh, so you don't have to wait through the entire scan. But just click the scan button. And there we go. Done. And we fast forward it into the future. And you can even uh, see all the information now. But you can scroll up there. So tons and tons and tons of information here um, and uh, interestingly enough also on the the left you'll notice the icons changed where it's uh, it has done some operating system discovery and changed the icons to to match the operating systems that it that it believes it found okay all right now what we want to do is we want to save this so click on the scan menu up here and click on save scan all right and then um, we want to select, let's go ahead and you see we have two scans that we did. And if this pops up, just go ahead and uh, select from the drop down menu here. Uh, you want to select the intense scan, which is this much longer scan here. So go ahead and select that one and click save. And when it asks you for a name, just go ahead and type in the lab number one. Um, in map scan you you do need to do this because this is um, required for for turn in and you'll want to uh, make sure it's this in map XML file and then before you hit save we need to put it in the right place here and that is going to be under the local disk C so click right here on local disk C and uh, we want to find the security strategies folder on the right so let's put it in here and there you go now you can hit save Now we want to actually spend some time reviewing the information that's in this GUI. Um, so uh, the information you see here and the output, the ports and host tab, um, you can um, scroll through this, there's not much to see here, but uh, topology, this is an interesting one, we'll get back to this in a moment. Um, host details and then you can click on the scans tab and, and familiarize yourself. Um, for turn in though, let's go ahead and click on topology and this is an interesting one because it's going to try and um, give you a map of sorts um, so you'll see the information is here but we're gonna we need to make this visible a little better so click on controls and then on the right you'll see uh, different uh, ways to manipulate the image here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the zoom and ring gap um, changes so let's make that ring gap uh, larger And if you can see off to the right here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, I'm clicking on these arrows to increase the zoom and increase the ring gap until you get it to a, um, a comfortable size. If you run this at home or at work, you may notice a lot more uh, nodes pop up on the ring, um, a lot more interesting information. But uh, in this case, uh, this is what we have on our um, remote labs. And just click Save Graphic up on the right here. Uh, click this icon and let's see what we're going to name this. Um, 
Let's name this a lab number one topology fisheye chart. And we want to save it as a PDF file. And it says by extension, you could easily type .pdf, but we'll just go ahead and select it from the list there. And we want to put it in the same spot as last time, so local disk C, security strategies here on the right, and just go ahead and save it there. That way it's all in one place to, to download later. And that's it for the, the tutorial. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you here how to transfer a file. So just click on the file transfer link up here if you haven't used this, uh, these labs before. You just click up there. Uh, the window pops up. It may not be as large as mine here. It may sh be a smaller window, um, but uh, you just click through these different things. Up here on the, what I would do is just click C here, find um, security strategies, and there's the files that we saved. And just download those to, download those to your computer and um, send them to the instructor. And that's it. Well, I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you have any comments, recommendations, or if you'd like to see any other tutorial made, please leave a comment down below or send an email at charlie.tutorials at gmail.com. Hit that like button, and thanks for watching.